This saying is hard. Who can accept it? You know, the question is, what's hard? (laughs) What's difficult? It's not very clear in our gospel today what saying is hard and who can accept it. Last week we celebrated, for good reason, our Blessed Mother. We celebrated the Assumption, the Feast of the Assumption, and that was good, but the negative part of it was we missed the gospel preceding today's. And so we miss all of the context of that first opening line. This saying is hard, who can accept it? And so very briefly, what was going on? What did Jesus say right before this? John 6, 54, 55. My flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have life within them. That's what Jesus had just said. And now all of a sudden we have all these disciples, people who are already following Christ say, this saying is hard. Who can accept it? I think it needs to be said very clearly that Jesus is being emphatic. Jesus means what he means. He means what he's saying. In other words, sometimes you hear today from people, Christ is being symbolic. My friends, there's no room for that. In the, in the gospel. There's none. There's no room for that in this gospel. Because Christ uses symbolism all the time, right? He says, I am the shepherd. Well, quite literally, he wasn't. He was a carpenter, but he was speaking metaphorically. He says, I am the light. He's not a lamp, <laughs> right? <laughs> but he is our guide. He says, I am the vine. And we, of course, we know he's not a plant. Right? None of those analogies ever made people leave him. None. Then we have today. I am the bread of life. I am the flesh. Those who drink, those who eat the flesh have true food. Those who drink my blood will have life within them. Christ has a chance to say, hey, I'm not being serious. I'm just being metaphorical. But he doesn't. Especially as his heart is saddened by those leaving, he could have said, hey, edit, undo, come back. Just kidding. LOL. (laughs) He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. Instead, he looks at his followers, he looks at the 12 and and says that very sad line, are you going to leave me too? Are you going to leave too? See, Christ didn't clarify, he doubled down. He didn't say, I'm not, I'm not serious. He said, no, I truly am the flesh and blood, and you must eat and drink of it. There's no room for analogy in this weekend's gospel. Christ meant what he said, and we have to take him for his word. But I think that question, will you leave me too, is very relevant for us this, in our time, right? And I know Christ is talking about the Eucharist. I'm going to widen the scope just a bit. I want us to really take this as an examination of conscience. What would it be for me that would cause me or make me tempted to leave? Think about these moments in the Gospels. Jesus says a lot. Go. Sin no more. Go. Sin no more. You know, here's the thing. All of us are sinners. Me as well, obviously. We're all sinners. We struggle. We have these bad habits in our lives that we have got to get rid of. But in the midst of our struggle with sin, we can be tempted to say, you know what? This thing is hard. Who can accept it? We can be tempted to say, it's easier to follow my own life. It's easier to follow my own path of sin than to follow that command that very demanding command from Jesus, go and sin no more. It's easier to give up. It's easier to give up than to follow that because learning to live a holy life is hard. Jesus also, think about the moment when the rich man approaches him. What does the rich man say? What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, go, sell everything you have, and then come. And follow me. My friends, the saying is hard. Who can accept it? 
All of us have possessions. All of us have things that we love. Material possessions, wealth, Father Nurky sports, all these things. But Christ is saying to the rich man, and he's saying to us, if you want to follow me, I've got to be the first priority in your life, not anything else in this world. So then the question is, are we willing to do that? Are we willing to say, you know what, those things that I love in this world pale in comparison to you. I will follow you. I'll leave everything else behind and follow you. Another example, and this one obviously hits, hits home for me. You know my parents. You know that marriage and divorce is pretty common today. And then Jesus is not, he's not subtle. He's very clear when he's asked about divorce. Master, what do you say? And he says, Moses allowed it because of the hardness of our hearts. But what God has brought together, no human being must separate. This saying is hard. Who can accept it? And I, I think we all know people in our lives who have quit coming to church because they just haven't been able to confront the wounds of a past marriage. Right? We want to invite them back because Christ wants to heal them. Absolutely. This saying is hard. Who can accept it? And of course, the apostles aren't innocent, right? We know this, especially because later, the apostles have that moment where they can remain faithful to the end. And what happens? Jesus is being crucified. Everyone else is, the whole world is against Christ. And what do the apostles do? They're terrified. And at his greatest moment of need, they leave. They don't remain faithful. They run away. They really, in fact, leave him too. Well, that's, again, relevant for us today because, let's just face it, our church has a lot of beliefs that are unpopular today, that the world is loud about and says they do not agree with us on. Whether it's human sexuality, whether it's gender, whether it's marriage, whether it's divorce, whether it's pro-life issues, there are all of these things that we believe and teach that the world is not happy with us about. And it would be easier to be just like the apostles and say, you know what, I'm leaving that. I'll go with the world on this one. This saying is hard. Who can accept it? The final one, the one I'm most afraid of right now is COVID. I've mentioned it before, but I've had a couple of people tell me, you know, Father, after being away from the church, just because of COVID, didn't really see the need for it anymore. Not coming back. Oh. <laughs> you know, how sad, how sad. It's an issue today. There are many different reasons that can make us feel like we wanna leave. There's a movie that I liked growing up, it was called Matilda. Now Matilda, <laughs> there's, an unfortunate scene with a chocolate cake and this little boy is traumatic for me. <laughs> but <laughs> you know the movie, you probably know why. But Matilda's father is a dishonest car salesman, okay? And it shows him, I think it's Danny DeVito that plays him, and he's getting ready to sell this car, and right before the people come to look at it, the bumper falls off. So what does he do? He takes super glue, puts it back on, <laughs> and he sells the car for way more than it's worth. Every time that we leave Jesus Christ for our former way of life, every time that we leave him for our sinfulness, for things of this world that we possess, for to go along with the world thinks, every time we leave him for that, it's like we give, we give away the precious gift that Christ wants to give us, and we choose that crappy car. That's what's going on when we go with the world and not with Christ. So the great question for us is, will we leave him too? And I invite you to stay. I invite you to stay. And when the master, and when, when, the, when, when Jesus confronts your life, and, and my life, our lives, and he says, hey, will you leave me too? Now we hold on to that great gift that he gives us through the word and the sacrament of the Eucharist. The one who longs to give us life, the one who longs to give us joy, the one who longs to give us 
fulfillment in everything. May we look at our good Lord and say, just like Peter, to whom else shall we go? You have the words of eternal life.